he hit record. Then he hit share screen. Then and he made then... sure he clicked here, share sound. And then he hit play. And then he went here and did this. Bring me everyone. What do you mean everyone? Everyone! Welcome to Everyone Racers, a show designed for the world of low dollar racing and oddball car culture. Doesn't matter what kind of lemma champ or lucky track dog league you run, SCCA or NASA, we won't discriminate. As long as you drive it hard and built it yourself. Join us each week for tech discussions, tips, tricks, as well as news and notes from the world of amateur endurance racing. And whether it's on the spot, hella sweet, or we're lucky enough and Chrissy gives us just the tip, we're sure you'll giggle a little and learn even less. Everyone reports to the paddock. This is Chris. This is Chrissy. And I'm mental. And when Chris reads the intro, it ends a lot sooner. And I'm the one that made that video. And I should know that music kept going. Do I just talk more quickly? Is that what it was? I think it's how I edit it because to, to try mm -hmm. and get like where we all talk, I've broken it up into segments and I'm trying to spread it out. Point being is I'm a terrible editor. I know. So, hmm. No, you're it's better great. than we are. Which it's is wonderful. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the worst part is that video too, is I keep seeing the picture of my old 928, one of the old 928s. And there is a track prepped one here for sale in Las Vegas. It just dropped down to $4,500. <laughs> it runs and has a title. But remember uh, how the other ones tried to kill you? I know. Also, I know. remember the subject of our episode like three weeks ago, two I weeks know. ago. I, and, okay. and I'm I'm just I'm verbalizing the temptation <laughs> yeah. of a track okay. prepped 928 okay, okay. that I know will blow up and or try to murder me. Yes, we appreciate you bringing this to the to your friends who can give you honest feedback and can help you make and, a and honestly mental. You're an idiot if you buy that car. <laughs> I mean, you've done a lot of stupid stuff. <laughs> <laughs> okay, intro, yeah, go. Sorry. Hey, and we are Everyone Racers. Thanks for joining us for a Chevy 327 episode. The Chevrolet 327 cubic inch V8 originated with the small block family of engines that first appeared in 1955 with a 265 cubic inch power plant. During its eight years of production, the potent 327 engine became known among small block aficionados as a mighty mouse of a motor that was extremely compact and efficient. Although most examples of the 327 were carbureted, some of the early Corvettes came equipped with a fuel injection and made more horsepower. So if you're not driving your Chevy Mighty Mouse, get out your bingo card. I'm working on the bingo card. Ooh, so if, yes, great. I have been. So if you have ideas, let us know because I'm going through the old one and I'm like, mm, that's good. Oh, uh, that one's old. Okay, that's yep. fine. But as listeners, I feel like you will probably come up with things better and notice things differently than we will because we're on the show and you're listening to it. So text mental if you come up with some good ideas or for a bingo card. Anything, any of our social media. Oh, medias. sure. But yes. yeah, you know, just writing in a whole email seems excessive. So if you've oh, got yeah, a good no, idea. But comment on the YouTube. Oh, or, sure. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah Straight yeah, up. Right. Or if you've got like my, my real phone number, text me or we've gotten, uh, I think, oh, was it one of the suggestions did come on the YouTube channel? Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. So I've been thinking, I was thinking about it, but of course it's one of those things I feel like we'll probably do a better job of like, Oh, that happened and we'll add it. So when I'm actually just sitting here looking at a list of things, I'm like, you know, I can, I can pick off old ones and I can come up with some new ones, but still, I think outsider knowledge. Yeah, maybe, maybe mental contemplates another terrible Porsche should go on there. I think that's on there already. Actually just contemplating a Porsche. Cause really I all think... of us. I think poor decision is on there. I think mental Ooh, has a poor Porsche, decision. Porsche decision. A Porsche decision, yes. Uh, all of the above. I think that might already be on there. So new bingo card is coming. I'm working on it actively. Awesome. Okay. And, 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 and in 1968, on the Bel Air 327, the timing would be four degrees before top dead center. It's a movie you haven't seen called My Cousin Vinny. It's I have fine. no. Uh, I've heard of it. Yes. But I have not seen it. Marissa Tormey got an Academy Award for that. I have uh, a lot more to do than just to watch that. <laughs> Fair Mental, enough. Mental, what you working on? It, as uh, mentioned, it is exercise prep that has started this week. So it is the beginning of our oh, busy slash like... birthday season mm. and all of that oh. other kind of crap going on there. Uh, so yeah, next week is, uh, yeah, 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 it's going to be interesting. Yeah. We talked about that one. Uh, as I, I posted in our Slack channel, and there'll be a video ideally shortcoming, uh, the Omega is now 
on ground. It is no. sitting on the ground. Yes, it is. Can it back drive? In a storage spot. Oh God, no. That is... Did it get the bends from the altitude change after so long? <laughs> <laughs> a, a little bit it did oh, actually like the tires had now. actually deflated uh oh. so i had to like air those up and they were garbage tires they were just put on there would be rollers but to get it off the trailer i had to air them all up first uh I, th that was it, it was interesting on that one and so the now that the omega is on the ground in a storage spot that meant that there was a trailer i needed to get rid of and that happened so much faster than i thought it would i actually posted the ad where I used the phrase sketchy AF and it was <laughs> sold within the hour of me posting it. I had 12 people actually interested in it, including one scammer whose Facebook profile had existed for 20 minutes and offered to pay me on this app on your cell phone. Can we take this to our cell? No, we cannot take this conversation to our cell phone. You can get bent. Kid drove up from Coachella. It's like a four hour drive. Why? Looked because he really wanted the trailer, handed me the money for the trailer. And then, uh, you know, plugged in the lights, the lights work. I don't know if there ever were turn signals on this trailer. I never cared. And, <laughs> and I said, hey. it home in the dark after. Exactly. But well, the, the, the tail lights on the RV are way up high. So, you know, people could, I mean, you know, if, it, if I was turning, it was obvious. So <laughs> he rewires the trailer in my driveway at 11 o'clock last night. Uh, I, I felt terrible. I went and got like a space heater for him and kind of put it on there. He right wires the whole thing. Then none of the lights worked. <laughs> oh, well, that's so on he, you. So he went that's... back, he went back to the original wiring and said, eh, it's a straight drive. And, and I, I tell you that to tell you this, it was 33 degrees last night. So this poor kid, and he got off work, drove straight here from Coachella, like five hours, rolled out of here at 1115, had to be at work at 7 a.m. this morning. Do you remember when you had that kind of energy? No. It, it, it existed. <laughs> well, yeah, but I didn't even still, I wouldn't do something that stupid. I'd be like, no, I'm not going to make that. that <laughs> I would. I also I've wouldn't never been buy, a on... moon, buy a moon trailer. <laughs> yeah. Duh, I would have stopped there. Don't buy moon trailer. It was a cheap enough moon trailer. So yeah, that was a. Uh, well, so... congratulations on the sale. Did you ever tell the internet that? I, I did. I posted it today uh, on the, on the Insta. And, oh, okay. uh, and there were some comments on the, you know, there's a. Because the uh, Facebook's is blowing up. Yeah. The Facebook's, they had somebody pouring out a 40 and uh, there were some, some interesting comments on there. And so uh, uh, someone said, yeah, that trailer will always be traced back to you. And I'm like, no way. And they said, don't underestimate the CSI oil analysis team. <laughs> many, so it had uh, a lot of posts. He, yes. Yes, we did. And I was going to throw it in there, but our listener feedback oh, has sold. one very lengthy, very important thing. So I didn't, <laughs> okay, I think I good. added one good. comment. Well, well, into oh. that one um but speaking of poor shut decisions uh our, ours is pretty much done yeah uh, i'm still working on getting the readiness monitors to set for emissions which i have an appointment in nine days so oh. hopefully we can get that done so i'm going to start driving it as often as i can to and then i've got the ridiculous list of the things you're supposed to do to get the porsche to do the readiness monitors and it's like AB, started, AB1, let it idle for two and a half minutes and then drive at 20, 30 miles an hour for a certain amount of time. And then a different oh. speed for a different amount of time. I mean, they all, every manufacturer has this one. I went through this bullshit with the Yukon years ago. <laughs> the Yukon had to be over a certain temperature to start. So that made it impossible to do in the winter, literally impossible. So this one, let's see if we can get it to work. Oh, and we did multiple drives and we're like, do we do it? No. No. And you're like, gotta go do it again. It was awful. Yeah. Yes. Uh, whatever. If it doesn't get inspected, it doesn't get inspected. The ticket is cheaper than the inspection. So oh. <laughs> good. Good. That's I just, just don't. That is risk analysis. That if that we, is an intelligent yeah. principle. Applied. If we were ever to get pulled over, I feel like that would just be an add on and not really great. So for speeding <laughs> or some some. Oh, yes. Traffic vi traffic violation. If you have yeah. a violation and you have a no registration or the uh, no inspection, that just adds on to it. So I feel like, and, yeah, kind of like an oh, exponential. Well. I, know, I feel thing. like you guys are both charming enough to go. We understand, we're but we're it so has charming. to get up above a certain temperature and it's winter. I promise we're going to do it in the spring. We could. Yeah, they might, they might let I've you really unless, been trying. unless we get caught going 120 down the highway. Then they're like, oh, oh. then you're just getting arrested. And they don't care about your inspection at that point. I could cry. 
It wouldn't. It's true. <laughs> yeah. Um, so anyway, but I've driven it like to work. Everything's fine. All good. But we didn't hey. drive it for a few days because it snowed and today it rained like biblical amounts. So I think yeah. there's an arc out front. Yeah. It That's is much- all across the country. Um you know, it- folks are coming to Las Vegas for this exercise. We've got six units that cannot get here on time because yeah. of weather. Yep. And and also because apparently most uh 727 Max 8s have the potential to turn into convertibles. So it's causing all kinds of yep. uh, snarly stuff. I'm on a text group with it's my Okies view, who are all talking about the um uh I snow window in Oklahoma. Seat, but that was a little much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Pay extra I want to that. sit. I want to sit in the sky. Go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and I, I do want to point out for all the Android users that two iPhones were sucked out of that plane and both of them are still working. <laughs> Thanks. I'm sure they say I, they'll have some kind of rebuttal because they always do. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> yep. Oh, so with the Porsche done, I've been working on the Civic a fair amount um, because, yes, we had the cage done, done, but done isn't done. When we had it done up at... Um, garage heroes it was the all the major bars were bent and intact in place but there's all the other stuff they still have to do like welding base plates which is the worst part of any cage ever welding the thick to thin and it's the stuff that has the undercoating and it burns it smells bad and it fills the garage with smoke it's terrible so stuff like that um also adding a footwell intrusion bar on the driver's side. First time I've done one of those, but that's all prepared now. Also that's adding jack points that come right off the cage and go straight through the floor in the middle of the car so that you can just jack on that one spot and then be able to put it on jack stands in the normal places and stuff like that. So that's all. I'm just prepping all kinds of things. That's cool. To get it all actually race ready at some point. But right now I'm out of welding gas. So I've been doing all these little prep things like all the metals like ready to go just needs to get welded in when i get some more welding gas which will happen tomorrow um had to fix a snowblower because i hadn't really done anything to it this snowblower is a 1961 arians that's like it's like a tank but when i got it it had a the tecumseh motor on it was a little weak so i replaced that with of course a harbor freight predator 212 engine as Which is does. the LS of right small on. engines. Oh, yeah. But it, it bolted, literally bolted it had on. the bolt holes for where I needed to put it on the yeah. snowblower. The bolt holes identical. The crank pulley, the shaft diameter identical. The, the location of the crank in relation in space to where it is identical. How did you they, know like, that? I didn't. I just oh. said, I'll make this <laughs> he work. He had a welder. He was going to make it no, work anyway. Yeah. I'll make it work. That? And I put it on and said, Wow. Oh, how about that? <laughs> so now and, uh, and the my favorite thing about this is that basically now has turned it into a murder snowblower this is the subject oh, of a it's a Stephen, murder. Stephen oh, king novel it, it, it's always been a murder snowblower because it's made in 1961 it does not have safety features like snowblowers of today you have to hold like three different things like one in your teeth it, uh, to get it to go anywhere right this is, is the opposite like you you have to squeeze the handle to get it to stop if you can just put it in gear with everything going in murder mode and it just go, it'll just, it, it go was away. literally just run away from you. Yeah. Yes. It'll just go and do what it needs to do. So watch out children and pets, and especially well, when it gets, keys. so we put keys through it once we yes, found those we later. Did. <laughs> yeah. We did. It yeah. shot them. All <laughs> my keys shot them right out all over the, yep. all over the lawn. It was very sad. Um, yeah. Yes, but, but it, it's even it, more of a challenge when it gets clogged because the snow that we've had was really uh, packing. It was very wet. And so it would just clog the whole hole. And then you're like, don't well, what put your I hand s- in there. Yeah. What don't am I going to stick in, in this snowblower that might just yeah. eat me, actually? Yeah. Uh, but there's a couple of things that weren't. Basically, all the rubber hoses had deteriorated and completely fallen apart. So it was just spewing fuel everywhere. So I had to take that all apart and fix those and fix it. A flaming the- murder snowblower. Yeah, really. At that <laughs> point, it was. But anyway, now it all works great. So. Fine. So more civic work until that's done. Until it's like race ready, race ready. And then and we clean the basement. We did clean the basement. Wow. I didn't know your basement ever got dirty. It, it does. Oh, uh, I just, you know, like each deck box of decorations and, you know, just bringing boxes of stuff down there and old food and just, you know, we just. I'll just put this here for now. Project. I want to yeah. do something else. And, yeah. You know. And you're like, it could go on the shelves, but then they have to be organized. And so it was just one of those organization, do it together, get it done. Now it's beautiful. I know. Not not so interesting, but one of those satisfying things. When you get them done, it just feels good. Ballad. Yep. And then I, when it was snowing, I was doing a whole bunch of work on the computer. So 
stuff for the library, stuff for work, just get it done because it's probably not a great time to go outside. So we'll just do sitting home. It was all good. All right. All right. Now, is it nice time? now in 1972, Roger Penske, Les Richter, and Mike Phelps built the American motorsports equivalent of an all-star game. The International Race of Champions, or for those of a certain age, IROC series, pitted 12 invited drivers in identically prepared race cars to set up uh, set up all by a single team of mechanics. And the idea was a test of pure driver ability with champions across many, many disciplines. Initially ran in Porsche 911s with Mark Donahue being the first ever to win the IROC Series Championship in 1974. Then in 1975, the series switched to their signature Camaros, until 1989, including a run of cars that were called the IROC Z. And right now, Tom's got a uh, sudden urge to throw on a gold chain and wear a white beater. <clears throat> then they had four years of Dodge Daytonas, two years of Dodge Avengers. Yeah. And until its demise in 2006, they ran Trans Am bodies. Now, why are we giving you this history lesson? Because IROC is back. Not the car, the series. On Monday, retired NASCAR crew chief Ray Everham and former Michael Waltrip Racing Team co-owner Rob Kaufman announced the formation of IROC Holdings Limited Liability Corporation, and they have acquired the rights to the International Race of Champions brand. They are looking to host an IROC branded event this year with historic cars from the series. And then they will quote, explore future opportunities and a link to that road and track article by Fred Smith is in our notes. Can I say a few funny things that have <laughs> nothing to do with this story, but I did not read it ahead of time. I def thought this was my a story about Michael Phelps, not Mike Phelps. And then he said 1972, and I was like, sure, I'm not sure he was alive. <laughs> <laughs> so I just felt like I needed to tell you what is in my brain. And his head oh. would probably stick out of an IROC Camaro, <laughs> like in the, out of the T-tops. He's too tall. Also, yeah. very uh, admittedly, um, uh, I didn't know what IROC stood for. So this history lesson was very helpful. This story was very impactful. Thank you very much <laughs> for giving me it this It doesn't story. just stand for Irique of Cologne. I didn't know. <laughs> I, never <laughs> bothered, yeah. I never bothered to ask. So Michael Phelps is in the IROC. Okay, I understand. Let's move on. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to go look and like do the AI thing where it makes photos and I'm just going to say Michael yep, Phelps Michael. in an IROC <laughs> and what it comes up with. Yep. I think so. <laughs> That's going to be the show intro, like the, the picture on the YouTube, right? Yep. Yep. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, it's in my brain, it's not not necessarily for everybody. Okay, go no. ahead. Keep going. <laughs> all right. Hey, uh, you've all heard of porch pirates, but what about driveway pirates? Colin Woodward at Jalopnik introduced us to the new concept. Uh, Amanda Brochu, in, in a Florida resident naturally, had someone steal her whole driveway. She put her house up for sale, having some renovations done. The trouble started when several contractors came by to measure over the course of a few days. Some questions from one of them indicated an imposter posing as the landlord contacted them about a driver replacement. When the mystical Andre was confronted about proof that he owned the house, he stopped responding. Amanda smelled something amiss, contacted the local PD. Andre then claimed to have given the wrong address. However, she came home to find her driveway completely gone. The contractor that had removed the driveway fell for the classic overpayment scam, which anyone who has ever sold anything uh, on the internet has seen. In this version, scammers look for houses that are listed for sale online, pretend to own it, and get a contractor to give them a quote for some work. Then they'll send a check for more than they agreed on amount, expecting a refund. You know how this goes. Um, fortunately, there are still some nice people, even in Florida. And after the story originally aired, a local business volunteered to replace her driveway for free. That's nice. Wow. Who does that? What? The people that t pulled it up probably are the ones who should have replaced it. You know, probably, but, but you know, if they fell for that, they're probably just some local tiny two employee operation that does driveways and they were probably screwed as well. Dumb. I'm impressed well. that they did it all in one day. That's a yeah. hard working guy. And, you got scammed, did, but you're a hard working guy. But also, how did nobody see it? You know, like, <laughs> oh, well, I guess maybe people thought that you if contracted. If you pull up somewhere, when you look like you can, if you show up somewhere wearing a high vis vest and have a clipboard and a white pickup truck, you can do almost anything. I 
Yeah. And everyone's be like, yeah, okay, whatever. I don't. Yep. Unless you have nosy neighbors, maybe then they will call you, but maybe not. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mick Ackers at Las Vegas, Las Vegas Review Journal tells us that the Formula One Vegas Grand Prix pit building now has a permanent name. The 300,000 square foot building is now called the Grand Prix Plaza. How unique. It's located uh, on the northeast corner of Harmon Avenue and Koval Lane. It was built by Liberty Media for the 2023 inaugural Las Vegas Grand Prix at only a cost of $500 million on the building, which includes purchasing the land and construction of the facility. Last year, Grand Prix CEO uh, Renee Wilm said that there's already events booking for the space for 2024, including convention-oriented events and driving schools. That I it looks like, so much better than what was there. I want to. I want to call it something different. You should name it something. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Maybe they'll change it. Uh, okay. So you know those times when you should be doing something, and then you think like, I just go somewhere else. I should be doing something else uh, other than social media, where you can endlessly scroll and not feel bad about yourself when you are done scrolling. Racing junk is the answer. So I got lost in the classified section where they have every brand you can imagine and you can click on it and they have, most of them have at least one car. So I was like, hmm, Edsel's, what do they have? And then I just click on like, I don't even know that I've heard of this brand. And then I click on those. Uh, but really the fun place is the road racing section. So that had, uh, they also, as you dive into the road racing section, they have the 24 hours of lemon section which is awesome. Uh, posted two days ago. I'm not even sure if it's available. Uh, it was an O5 focus manual disc brakes and a cage, which if you click through some of the pictures, that cage looks like it has a couple extra bars, but not sure. Maybe hopefully that's okay. Uh, it's in Merrill, Wisconsin listed for $7,500. Uh, looks pretty flat. The panels look pretty flat and that Lumina, it looks like it might be still available. Uh, Chevy Lumina, I think we talked about it a few weeks ago. It's we did. We talked bucks. about this Focus before, too. It's been uh, up since did July. we? Yeah. Oh, but it's still well, a good deal. You're still right. Still, still there. Still so. yep. yeah. get, re get ready for race season. Buy that car. Not that Avoid car, what we're going to talk car. about in the main topic by getting something that's already done. Yeah. Sounds great. Cool. Race and junk. Go there. And while it's still there, apparently Pod 23 is still good. Try pod 24. We don't know, but get that membership on there. That helps you get like all the see people that are looking at your stuff. You get to see ads early. You get away from like the, the pop-up advertisements, all that kind of stuff. It's, it's like super, super cheap. It's worth it. Just do it. Do it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Listen to back time. On the YouTube, Tyler said to the point of being brake pads is my new favorite descriptor of overcooked meat. That was, that was a pretty good one. Now, it's probably fine. I appreciated our color me bad reference from the last episode. And he even like had us singing the song, which is now stuck in my head. Thanks for that one. And then also on our little video short that we put on the Insta and on the YouTube about Chrissy almost dying. Jay Plas said, I live in a state of mild asphyxiation. The pretty colors <laughs> what do, do it for me. I didn't get colors. <laughs> unfortunately. Oh, you got chipped. I, I, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yep. Uh, Michael K pontificated a bit as a comment on YouTube. Now this is lengthy, but it's good. Stay with us. This is about road trips. So <laughs> says slightly different, but my yearly long motorcycle road trip is a single minded that could appeal to folks that own, for instance, a fully sorted NSX Boxster or Miata. It's as hundred percent great roads focused, or as I call it, quote, all the curves I need to last a year packed into two weeks, end quote. Uh, should you choose to embark on such a quest, a lot of what just mentions here is valid, but the focus changes. The driving is the destination. So he gives a tip here that Butler Maps, which is curated maps of roads rated for various things with the best having a paragraph of explanations. That's Butler Maps. Uh, Great Motorcycle Roads is on YouTube. And that state tourism boards of West Virginia, Arkansas, and Tennessee excel at motorcycle slash sports car tourism. And those are all exceptional ways to pick must-drive roads. After that, you loosely organize how to get there and connect them together. He continues, I can burn down 700 miles of dead, boring interstate in any given day, motorcycle or car. Wow. Iron button on you, Michael. Um, and this trip, it's only acceptable to get you to the roads you want to connect together. Once there, plan for 250 to 350 miles days at most. 
if you Google and maps it, you're looking at seven to eight hours of actual road time. And if it's that curvy, there could be multiple beautiful sites you want to pull off for. On a 14-day trip, for instance, he says mine are normally longer, uh, never plan more than 11 days. You have to do laundry at some point. You're going to find things you want to do or rabbits to chase. Sometimes things are closed. Sometimes you have minor maintenance emergencies. So I'm a planner by nature, but I try to think, uh, try my best to only make three reservations max for those 14 days. But have options, right? Have options you think you want to stay at with phone numbers already in your phone for every day. Uh, Massive swaths of these great driving roads have no cell service, and it's not uncommon to have 100 miles between reliable fuel supplies and many places that are 60 miles from a grocery store, liquor store, or even your evening motel. So if your range is 200 miles in a tank, fill up every time you can. Buy the evening's refreshments an hour or two before your plan stop for the night. Download your map before you leave in the morning. These are all great tips, Mike. That was Thank great. you. Great. Thanks mm-hmm. so That's much. That's why I read for the that. whole thing. I, I first read it. It's like, well, how am oh. I going to summarize that? And I said, no, no, I'm not going to. This is good no. stuff. That's great. Thanks for I that. I want to do my best to get those links. But if I don't have those links in the show notes or you have a specific question, get a hold of us. We'll put you in touch with Michael because he's a great guy. And yeah, get him talking about road trips and cars and stuff like that. Yeah, it's it's not hard. He'll share all that stuff with you. Wow. Good. Should have had him on. But thanks for that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Main topic. Main topic time. You know, burnout is not just something you do in a Dairy Queen parking lot. But it is something Z. you should absolutely do in a Dairy Queen parking lot. If you have an with, RXZ, don't you have to? Isn't that like with um, Michael ob- obligatory? <laughs> oh, suddenly, yeah, exactly. Yeah, Michael Phelps will get high and sit in your passenger seat. <laughs> <laughs> well, and if you've got an IROC and you're at the Dairy Queen and you don't do a burnout, the communist have won. Oh, wow. That's true. Or your OptiSpark yeah. fail. Either way. Yeah. So we've all been there. We've all had it. Let's. We're going to talk a bit about it and what we can do about it. So I, mean, everyone's I, got I the... do want to jump in here, here and go. I apologize for being rude. Take over. Me, you. No, I don't want to take over. We, we actually did cover this topic. We'd forgotten. It's like three years ago and we were talking about burnout and it was inspired by a guest who was so burned out. They actually couldn't even make it onto the show. So, uh, we, we talked about coming back to this topic and I, I feel like it's valid. Well, we had a recent uh, listener suggestion that yes. we handle this topic yeah. again. So, and we, we specifically didn't go back and look at our notes from last time because we wanted Correct. to have a different perspective on this instead of rehashing Correct. what we may have talked about before. Yeah. Because we've all definitely had those days. I don't want to go to the garage. I'm not excited about this race. I feel like it's a burden, all of this stuff. And it's not we're going to focus it on the racing stuff, but it can be anything in your life, frankly. Mm-hmm. Right. Lead um, in. Go ahead. Right. So uh, let's, you know, I think mostly it's a feeling when you've got burnout. And it, sure, it, it comes on and things like, that you're just not excited to do this thing that you used to be excited to do. You're not motivated to go on to it. You can't spend the time on it that you used to do. Um, you know, you, you feel bad about about the whole situation. It's just that it turns you turns you off, turns you down, and just takes your energy away, which can lead to there's there's guilt and depression, and anxiety, and all those you know, irritability, all those wonderful things <laughs> that that are no good. Yes, and and. Uh, depression and anxiety sounds like it's extreme, but if you literally, if you're sitting there like, and you start feeling, Oh God, I should have had this done by now. Da, 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 da. Go. I'm so worthless on this. Or you're, you're starting to, you know, tense up because you've got to go in the garage. Cause you've got to get this done. I, I I'm betting more than a few of our listeners that are kind of nod their head and be like, yeah, I've been there. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it, it stops. The thing that brought you joy is now bringing you pain. That's always yeah. terrible. Mm-hmm. And yeah. it's it's usually the same things that set up for it. Yes, and you're usually you've got too much on your plate. Like you have you have taken on too much, and you did because you were excited about it. And when you're excited about it, yes, and uh, you, yes, I'll do that. Oh yes, oh I'll, I'll, sure, I can prep three cars for that race. <laughs> Sounds great, no problem, <laughs> right? Yes, uh, or everyone will help me. I'll have lots of help. There'll be a lot of time to fixing and helping. Or when your helpers yeah. are also burnout, that doesn't help either. Yeah, and I I, I want to like stay on this topic. Um, 
we've we've noticed over the years that certainly there are a lot of neurodivergent people that are attracted to this hobby and why wouldn't they be it's it's in a different setting it's interesting challenges it's problems it's noisy it's fast it's loud there's you meet all kinds of different people let your freak flag fly whenever you want to you yep. really really do uh, so you know as a late late in life diagnosed neurodivergent person i want to throw in there too is we a lot of us love to overcommit because we have a ton of great ideas and we're seeking out that dopamine rush and novelty and the validation from others. And that is just an area I have done that so many times personally. And, you know, in this race thing, and you just, you're like, Oh, I can absolutely do all this and it'll be great. And everyone will think I'm the coolest and you're setting yourself up for failure on that one. So back to racing, I think uh, one of the couple of signs of burnout that I have had, uh, and I've been pretty vocal about it, especially when we were trying to go for the win uh, in the Civic for a while. The one thing is that I, uh, the pressure to perform or pressure uh, I put on myself was a problem. And that manifested in me in nightmares. So I had nightmares a lot. So I'm one of those people that remember all of my dreams, probably dream most nights. Uh, but I was, I was having like serious nightmares and that, um, that's not great. Uh, so I think that's where I found one thing. And I also, um, for the pressure to perform for, uh, for trying to go for the win for so long was that I forgot why I like the sport. So I like the sport because I like to race. That's great. It's fun to get in the car and fun to race against your friends. Uh, but I also really like hanging out with people, uh, occasionally drinking too much, seeing friends, spending time with them, sometimes say, staying up all night and then you end up just laughing hysterically and will never forget those nights. But when you are racing for the win, I'm in bed at nine o'clock. I'm up early. I am making breakfast. I am hydrated. I am not um, hanging out with friends. So when you do that consistently over and over again, I that's one aspect of racing of where I where I lost. I I got sad and didn't necessarily realize it until uh, till we till we won and then it was over and then we figured out burnout and then I realized I was burned out. So that's my anecdotal nightmares is where mine comes in i you know they they mentioned one of the physical uh side effects is, is headaches and yeah and if it's on your mind yeah, all the time absolutely below. nightmares that's i i i feel bad that i was a, a part of that that's that's <laughs> horrible i'm so no i'm legitimately sorry that's yeah no one deserves that not from your joyful hobby my husband did not feel that way so i guess it's okay <laughs> well it's because your husband was burned out he's trying to get the car ready he's trying to win uh, I guess I that guess. too. Yeah. I mean, I had it when I'm I feel like I'm was I actually I had it with the Rolls Royce. Cause then we were bringing three cars to the track. Really? The, four, both the Civic the Rolls and the Rolls. Two cars. <laughs> sure. And, and I was the only one that knew anything about the Rolls. Like it was such a weird thing and it was just too much. Like I just, like I didn't have any, I didn't have fun that weekend trying to keep all of them going. And sure, I like I wasn't the only one doing all the work, but um, I felt the responsibility for it and had done a lot of work to get up to that point and just hadn't done anything else. Um, and I felt that too in, in later years when I felt like I was doing a lot of work to for other people to drive the car that weren't working on it or putting in any real significant effort, even if you know, some people could and some people couldn't. Uh, and that was just, it got to the point where I wasn't interested in doing all this work and, and sacrificing other things in my life just for that. And that took away the fun of it to the point where like, I'm just not going to keep doing that anymore. Yeah. And I, I want to come back to the second point, but it sounds like for, for both of you guys, you know, it was a, uh, a struggle to recognizing limits and boundaries, you know, just, you have to go, this isn't going to happen. I, I cannot accept this additional responsibility. Took us a while to get there and mm -hmm. to follow through. Chris has been saying for years, I'm not going to do this. And then we get roped into another, oh, there's another car. Oh, there's an IOE. There's, you know, the IOE didn't win. So we got to keep going and keep bringing more cars. And, and so I think plus the other cars, right. And then I feel like 
we also have an allegiance to a lot of our arrive and drives. So saying no to bringing extra cars means you can't race with your additional friends. And some of them are relying on you to provide said car. Um, so and I think the I, other people I, like I want to see, I want to hang out. I want to race with the people, but if the only way I can do it is to overextend myself and make it no fun for me, then I have to, then it's not the fun that it should be and pull that back in. So you, you know, yeah. And so in, then, all right. That falls you, under, you, it falls under a lot of, <laughs> you know, uh, your neurodivergence types tend to be people pleasers because, you know, well, if you're anything like me, you spent an entire, you know, your entire life in school going, oh, if you just applied yourself. So you're, you're, you're trying extra hard. You're, just, you're doing things I that mean, normally. What does your arm say? So I feel like. Sure. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, you know, and, and, you know, but you want to be a good teammate. You want to be a good car owner. You want, you want your crew and your friends to be happy and satisfied and you want their experience to be a positive one. And it's very easy to start sacrificing your own in the, the pursuit of that one. Mm -hmm. yeah, so then what are we going to do about this? We've all been there, figured out how we got there. So now what are our next steps? Well, and, and it's, it's an effective one, but it's, it's a sledgehammer level of effect, but all right, you know what? I'm done. I'm just, I'm taking a break from this and I'm just going to walk away from it. And it's effective, but ideally if we talk through this and we want to get you guys' feedback on this one, we can give you, if you know the warning signs and you have some, some things you can apply before you get to this point, you don't have to completely break away from it and walk away from it. But, if you find yourself where you're having headaches or bad dreams, or you're feeling guilty because you're not out working on the car, then yeah, maybe it's time. Just nope. 2024. Well, I'm not going to go race. And I did that after we won, we went to CMP and I was like, I'm not racing. Everybody's like, I'm sure we can get your wristband. I don't want to race. I didn't bring a suit. I didn't go to race. So Yeah. I mean, and maybe it's just a race and our races are, if you do just East Coast and that kind of thing, you have time in between. So taking a race off may not be a bad thing or just going to one less race. And I think some of our friends are actually doing that or, you know, changing it up, changing up the schedule a little bit, go to a different race instead of the race that you always, that's upcoming. That's the next one, go somewhere else. And it might not be till the end of the year, gives you time to take it off. So break doesn't mean I'm getting rid of the car today. I think break can be, I just yes. don't want to go so to the next small, one. Small or long break. They're different breaks, but break mm -hmm. right. all together yeah. is definitely one thing. I like this and, next one you put in there, the uh, the tactics change. Um, and yeah. I told the story, you know, the the last race of 23, the Bernal dads, now they've, they're good drivers, they're good builders, and they are always at the pointy end. And, you know, fate or themselves, they tend to, you know, finish in the top five after stressing out about it all weekend in the last race, they showed up with the dodgy van completely different approach. Nope. We're not trying for the win. We're not going to do this. We are going for a different idea. And it, it had been an idea that they've been gestating for a while. Oh, Never seen many those guys. Of us had. I'm so happy. Oh, absolutely. They did it. Yeah. That's great. Uh, and I don't think I've ever seen those guys laughing that hard and just chilling out on it you know it it you could almost see them falling back in love with it it's hard to do that though it is especially if you are you have the the itch for a win it's very hard to say well you know we've been close or we're trying or this car just has to win and because as we said this is a goal of ours i don't, can't even imagine just going to the next race and be like screw it i mean if you're out you're out right like yeah. then you then then you have a good time but yeah. uh well, if you're going we did for that for a while after the civic one and after especially after they got crashed and we were like eh casual racing with friends and we totally yeah. just took took too many drivers and we we're like yeah whatever we'll just do the best we can and that's fine we'll have fun and we did that for a while and that mm -hmm. was great and then we had a time where we only had three drivers and we came we were we were <laughs> nine nine minutes away from winning B and said, damn it. All right. We all got the itch again and, and started yep. trying again. Yep. Yep. Well, we've yep. got another good friend and I don't know if I want to sell them out because they're, they're building, you know, they've been building fascinating, great award-winning cars. And they're like, yeah, you know, it'd be great 
go fast and win. I'm so tired of just having to back off up rolling art. I actually want to start dicing it up. And they have spent a significant amount of time changing their tactic to building a car that by their own admission is cheaty as fuck. They don't care. Yeah, well, that's it. You find something new that's working for you. Like I've definitely seen people do that both that the other ways. Mm-hmm. They've been winning and the pressure and the great IOE. Let's do the fun cars and the other way too. So there's also still front. There's pressure with the. I'm sorry, I didn't know if that's where you were going with this. But there's pressure to win IOE too. There is, but there's also <laughs> some people that just say we're just going to bring this car. It's a ridiculous car. We know that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, these are people that are fueling with like lawnmower cans at that point. Just who's like, no, I'm just having a good time. Doesn't matter. Like stop for yeah. breakfast, you know, or like stop for lunch kind of people. And I literally totally don't great. remember when we did that. We did like, really, I, I, but I. The Civic win was a dustbuster. Like I don't. It was. <laughs> it was so long ago. Yeah. And we may have done something like that, that it's not even on our radar. I I I do remember you guys kind of uh, like a handful of races where it was you know you know mental don't no just stop casual racing with friends Pittsburgh uh, when it was pouring down rain and we we Hobbs's Beamer and the TR seven and I still managed to get a black oh, flag but yeah yeah. But well, it, also, good conditions are that bad. Just yeah. and you're not trying to win because I'm pretty mm-hmm. sure we didn't, weren't trying to win for anything on that one. Yeah. Uh, Jeff Hanka, he comes through Las Vegas every now and again. We had him on the show a little while back, and he always says, uh, "New teams come to him a lot for advice, especially where he lives. He's like the lemons guy, or if you have a Fiero, he's the guy." And Duh. his thing is, yeah, yeah, get the right car. And then the, his other big thing is get the right people. And his third one is don't make your own problems. But he, he, uh, he nice. talked about how he had to move some personnel around and there are people that, you know, he likes, he hangs out with, he'll help him out, but he doesn't want him on his car. Uh, cause it's, it's not enhancing his experience and it was contributing to, a he had some early burnout coming into mm-hmm. a race this year. And he's like, I almost walked away from it. I had to make some changes. So what do, what do we mean by change change views is the next one we have listed here. What do you mean by change views? That's similar to changing tactics is or, or it's I guess changing goals is it. What is your goal? Your is your goal if your goal is I have to we pressure to win or like you know pressure for whatever whatever it might be if it's not working for you it's not working for you. Mm-hmm. Pick a different goal. Say mm-hmm. my goal this time is to talk to 10 new people. Well, oh, race, I like this. For example. View. Okay, okay. Yeah. Or, or even uh, my you... goal is to have the best, um, like to bring the most dish cool at the dish potluck. potluck. <laughs> right, exactly. That was where I was going. Yeah. Were you? Oh, yeah. I love this. Yeah, that's actually, yeah. That, that's super fun. Or, or if you're trying to stay, you want to still be, you know, I, I'm a pointy end person, and I'm going to be a pointy end person. Okay, well, you know, change your views of okay, we're not going to try and win overall. We're going to try and cut our pit stops consistently below this you know, safe, clean pit stops, or we're going to see if we can't, uh, run, you know, this chunk of laps in this period of time, or we're going to up our lap count, you know, just, just bring in something you can keep working towards that goal, but it gives you something different to focus on that still keeps you moving in a forward direction and gives you something measurable. If you're that person, that's how I took it. I'm sorry. That yeah, was, no, was, no, sorry. Yeah. I'm just was just trying mm-hmm. to figure out what how this uh, was different. That's good. Mm-hmm. I like that. Find different. And then, uh, Chrissy, I think you touched on this one, but um, you know, go to a different track. Yeah, and and you you didn't hear me say it, but you're about to hear me say it. Maybe a different series. Even if you go to a different series, you're like, wow, this is awful. I can't wait to go back to this other thing that I ran, you know, if, if nothing else, it, it still gives you a different perspective. Or it, it, you could just try like, um, we've had great fun HPDE weekends with it's friends. Just, yeah. It's just exactly like, what I was If everyone say, yeah. can bring a car that's trackable and you all get an, you know, hopefully one or two different run groups and just go have fun. And you get to have basically because fun time at track with friends is the reason a lot of us race now. So can you do it in a way that's less stressful? And and sometimes we've been like, yeah, we're just not going out this session. Yeah. You know, Too or, hot. Car's a little hot. Yeah. Run a little rough. Uh, you know, end of the day, not really feeling it. Had some good runs. Ended on a good note. Let's go. Yeah, absolutely. Or some, but that kind of weekend also can maybe help you work through a problem your car has yeah. or a problem you have 
that's making it a less pleasant weekend. Yeah. So that's just, that's the kind of change of pace, change of venue. I think, I, and I will always huge. endorse grid life. If, you know, if I'm not raising, it's not the same thing. Grid life, grid life's a party, you know, it's a track day and uh, it's, you know, you can get as competitive or not competitive as you want to be, but you'll still have that kind of same level of, you know, fun energy around uh, in a grid, grid life. Well, grid life is not always a party. It is not a party. <laughs> we went no. to grid life at NJMP expecting a party and we were literally the only people out there. Bear. We were the only people that stayed. So no, no, I'm just setting this so that your expectation is not that it is not always a party. I think they have different parties. My expectation that was that it was going to be a party and we saw some people and we ended up sitting with the fishers in a parking lot that was full of bugs and it was dark. <laughs> So we, the grid life festivals are always a party. You You're Thank right. You. They, they, they have opened up to different stuff. I mean, you like, can bring, you should bring your own party, uh, right. but don't expect that everything is like a lemons race. When you go to a grid life event no. is what I'm trying to make sure. Right? No, 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 That's, no, I didn't no, know no. that. And then when we showed up, we were like this, where's the party? <laughs> I took a video. I know of going through the garage and there was like one, somebody's like boom box playing in the one background and there was not a single soul around. So, <laughs> Uh, not every career life is party, but you can make your own party. Uh, yeah. We do net, we do NASA HPDs with whatever's uh, mid Atlantic or great lakes or one of those that are around here. Um, and so, yeah, I think that's a great idea because then you are still racing a car. You're still having fun. You're still on track. You're like, yeah, like I'm not racing for anything other than getting better. And like, why not? Yeah. yeah. I love it. I, I've got to stop us for one second to share my screen. I've been playing with, um, AI image creators. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he found the Michael Phelps in an eye rock. <laughs> so I got it. <laughs> I'm glad I shared that. Screen. I mean, I, what are you going to do? Make fun of me? You already do that. Oh, no way. Yeah. No, this is, this is brilliant. This, this is a theme <laughs> right here. That's brilliant. Oh, <laughs> this is what I got. Camaro, <laughs> IROC Z doing burns in a Dairy Queen parking lot with an Olympic swimmer. I love how it's an all wheel drive Camaro Targa yep. that is doing yeah. the burnout. This is epic. And it's from a Dairy Weed. Right. Ooh, weed. Okay. I'm, I'm going to need that image uh, yep. either in the drive or text that that is fantastic. Yes. <laughs> you uh, are correct. We have just found the theme for this episode. Yeah. You That's are welcome. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> uh, in general, Bing AI uh, image creators are pretty hilarious. <laughs> they really are. Someone posted yeah. up. Uh, I I I I was depressed. I was missing Road America. So they're like, what? And they had something about the Road America Lemons race, and it was so funny. It was really really good. Uh, and that chuckle right there is an excellent segue to this uh, this last point. If we're talking about it and you are understanding or you're empathizing and you're like, holy crap, I'm right there. Or yeah, I remember this happened to me. Other people have dealt with this. This is not unique. And the problem with some of these burnout feelings, especially anxiety and depression is you start thinking you're the only one. What's the matter with me? Why is everyone else having fun? Clearly I am broken. No, you're not. This is what we're talking about. And the best thing is you start verbalizing to your support network, your gearhead friends, your other people that probably aren't even involved in racing. Hey, I am feeling this. And they might offer you that change of pace, that change of venue, that change of perspective, or just the assurance that there's nothing wrong with you. You just burning yourself out. Mm -hmm. Totally. And they might be the ones who are, in, you know, they're because they're the ones involved, they might say, no, no, don't worry about it. Like, don't stress about making sure I have a seat or, oh, I didn't know you were so uh, uh, you know, behind. I'll make time to come up and help or, or they might say, oh, it's a shame. <laughs> no matter what, you've got an answer on all those things. What it's going to yeah. help. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. That's a, that's a, that's a <laughs> classic one. Uh nope. We've got All some right. tips to recover. Yeah. Now so, too, you know, on. okay. I know I'm burned out or I'm getting burned out and I don't want to hate this. What do I do, Chris? Well, there's lots of things you can do. We talked about some of the, some of the things to start out, but uh, recognizing you have the problem is always the step in your problem, no matter what your problem is. Mm -hmm. Like I have this ridiculous moon trailer. <laughs> this is not a good idea. 
I, I must going. get I must get car that I truly care about off of Moon Trailer because it is right. rotting away. Right. You know, yes. that's you recognize that's a problem. Okay, great. So then what? All right. Take care of yourself and try to figure it out. Like what there, there's always a way out of all these things. You just have to take the steps to do it. Your your physical and mental state in order to maintain stress, whether that stress is coming from your job, from your family, from a situation that you are going through right now, you still have to have your body and your brain. And if your hobby is bringing you this stress, you cannot sacrifice that in order to keep going on the hobby because now the hobby is doing the opposite of what it's supposed to do, which is giving you an escape. So if you've got an exercise regime or a, a you, you, you've got your Sunday, I go to church regime, whatever your thing is that keeps you grounded and normal, you can't sacrifice that for the hobby. You've got to take care of your mental and physical self. I feel like all of this is speaking to me of like, well, I just kept having the nightmares. I just kept doing that. I mean, I feel like, does anybody? Hey, eventually say? we got our goal. We did it. But you agree. Uh, yes. But, but yeah, and this is so, you know, you, you, I'm going to bring it back over to the neurodivergent thing. And we, we, in the, the, in the world of normies, uh, we mask our mental, emotional, and physical behaviors that highlight that we are different because you've spent your whole life being told you're the problem. You're too fidgety. You, you're too spacey. You're too flaky. You can't do anything like that. So you're always trying to fit in. And it's a huge tendency of the neurodivergent, but it is not unique to the neurodivergent. People tend to suffer in silence and just keep doing the same thing because they're convinced that they're the problem and they're not. I, 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 I'm genuinely feeling bad that you kept having nightmares. I'm sorry. I really am. Thank you for your concern. <laughs> I'm just, I'm thinking about myself and my own burnout when I'm listening to these tips to recover that I'm like, just kept being stressed about it. That's just what I did. You're not the only one that does that. I know, you know? I know. Yeah. If you don't change anything, nothing changes. You're right. Mm -hmm. All yep. right. Build breaks. It, you, you have to have a little bit of a break somehow. You can't, you've already established you can't keep going with what you're doing. So stop. Okay. And then say, determine what your plan is. And then when are you going to stop and check again? See, is, is this working? Okay, I'm doing something new. Is this actually working or not? And it can be your own check-in, but maybe you check in with a trusted friend who you talk to about this and, and they can give you a different opinion on it too. All right. You're going to keep hearing this from me, even though I cut my hair mindfulness, All right? We, you, you'll go into the garage or you go into your shop or you're doing something and you're just on autopilot. This is supposed to bring you joy. Now you might be doing an unpleasant thing in order to enable the pleasant thing, but you still have to realize why you're there. And it's the easiest way to start just being aware and being mindful of your actions is to focus on your breathing. Count to five as you breathe in, count to five as you breathe out. I'm a weirdo. So I, things like, I say things like, I am clearing this workbench off in order to organize my garage so that I can work on the 914, which I want to do. And I'm aware of what I'm doing and it keeps me motivated through what could be an unpleasant task because I, it, I am clearing a path to the thing that I want to do. I like that idea. I also think there's probably value going back to care for yourself to have men mindfulness because I think mindfulness is a good thing. I, I don't have mental hair, but uh, I think that it is a good practice. I think away from a garage and a race car or cars is probably also a good idea. So if you are trying to be better at, at caring for your mental and physical space, I think mindfulness, maybe not being near the triggers of what is causing you those pains, may be a better avenue. And it, mm -hmm. in addition to, yes, focus on your breathing, but I think sitting in a dimly lit room, focused on your breathing away from your race cars may be also a helpful. Oh yes. My, my, my new mindfulness thing is I'm not every day, but most days I go and get in my pool and oh, that's I a listen. lovely place to be mindful. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, it, it, <laughs> yeah, it provides an immediate 
like kind of shocked my system. Yeah. But then I just kind of focus on the world around me. I hear the cars, I hear the birds, I hear my dogs crying to get let back in because they want to go eat breakfast. But it's it's the whole idea is you're just you're not just moving through the world, but you are now a part of the world. Yep. Okay. Enough hippie. <laughs> Never enough hippie crap. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh I the uh, establish a daily routine. We had Pat Carity on here, Angry P, who built his LS swapped Corvair. Now it took him a number of years to do it with two kids and a wife and other hobbies that have nothing to do with cars in a single car garage where he also had to maintain, you know, the family minivan. And he just had a daily routine where he did a little bit every day. And that daily routine isn't just about you working on the car or you working on the driver. It is all encompassing. I, I, I'm in the morning. I do this because it puts me in a good place. I, I'm, I'm working on this other aspect of my life. I'm going to have dinner with my family or my friends or people that I care about. And we're not going to think about race cars. And then, uh, you know, on these days, I can get this much time in the garage. You just have that routine. Know that there's going to be extenuating factors and things that affect it. But just having that schedule to deviate from kind of starts to give you a, a better idea of the sense of scope and how far you can get in one time without trying to overtask yourself. I love this next one. I'm all about this setting alarms to signal when it's time to stop working. I think it's a great thing. I think uh, one idea is when I'm done with this task, but I often find myself just like, well, I could just do a little bit more or just start this other thing or just keep going. And uh, and I think, yeah, I think starting setting an alarm makes you realize the time that's passing. So it's not like, wow, I spent, you know, eight hours in the garage. You're like, oh, well, I have time to stop. So mm -hmm. I think that's, this is a good one. I, I have to do this. Uh, it's the hyper focus, you know, just absolute loss of the passage of time uh, when you're working on something, especially if it's something you like or something you enjoy doing. And when you've got like a whole day where this is going to be great, I've got this Saturday and I can spend eight hours in the garage to do this whole thing. That's great. But you're like trying to do something on a school night or a weeknight. And all of a sudden it's three in the morning and sure you got a bunch done, but now you're having a negative impact on every other factor that makes you good at this one thing. Um, I, I actually am terrible, especially during the summer. I won't drink water. So I have to set an alarm, go drink some water, go do oh. these things. Uh, I've gotten much better about it, especially if I'm driving at the racetrack. I have constant reminders on my phone because I, I just, I'm so immersed and I'm having such a great time that I'll neglect my physical self health. And that's not a time you want to be in the car. You're obviously and not I, standing next to me long enough because. Because <laughs> you say, go drink some water. No, because I'm just doing that all the time. So yes, um, yes. but I, I I have to be very very careful about my time in the garage, and I I do I set alarms that just says clean up, and I wherever I am I just wipe down the tools, clean my hands, set some stuff out if I need to write some things down because I know it's going to be a couple of days before I come back into it I do that, but I don't need to be in the garage till one o'clock in the morning. I'm too old for that crap. I have a job. I have to go do stuff the next day. That leads on to the next topic very well. You started, said you start, you write things down on your to-do list, make a to-do list. We have a whiteboard in our garage. You probably have some, either some kind of paper, cardboard, uh, whatever the back Pizza of box. your garage door. Yeah. Whatever. Write down what you need to do. Make a, make a list. And the problem is that sometimes with your list are just like engine roll cage you're just like your list your the the items on your list are like big things or like you know take tape the tail lights right i only so have so much the... room on the list sure so. and it's not like you're gonna make a little like and your little carrots that say and you know the halo bar and a bars and b and you know right you're not gonna say all that but um sometimes with the list i, I totally do and Good. sometimes it's not even about the going back and looking at the list, just, just writing it down, just puts it in order in my brain. Got it. Okay. I mean, you do it either way, helping to write it down at least gives you a goal in mind, even if it's the whiteboard is full, then that might show you that you actually do really need help. Okay. Go ahead. You guys cool. establish or Chris established this next one. 
I did. No, I would like you to answer this question oh, because that is from great. the listener that suggested this. Yeah, I said, how do you recover from Iron Manning multiple cars? I'm the only one that fixes it. So go back to the start of this discussion, sir. And the th that's where you start. You just can't do it. You have to, you're going to have to prioritize and pick out the thing that is bringing you the most happiness and is making this all worth it for you. You can only do so much. And if you try to do too much, it's you're, you're, you're it's not going to work. So, yeah. I, I would say if you have the right team or at least some of the right team, you're going to have to dole some of that stuff out. One of the neat things that I like that you guys do is you just throw the, you throw the checklist on the front windshield of the car. These things. Well, this is like, done. well, what about building, preparing, bringing? Oh yeah. You know, you're yeah, just, that's the hard part is you're expected much... to bring cars, fix yes, cars. And, and when people expect you, to, oh, well, you're, or you're the one building. Oh, good. It's going to be all done when he gets to the track. Right. Yeah. I know it's not. It's like, what, what's going on? And, and, you may have to have some frank and honest conversations, guys. I can't get this done. You know, uh, these are our options. We scale it to this, we scale it to this, or you guys show up here and we do these things, uh, kind of a, that these are, these are my suggestions. Um, if you got into this because you wanted to make your team happy and you like, and you trust your team, I think the people can surprise you if you throw out there to your organization not everyone some people will disappoint you but you can throw out there this has to happen i can't get it done who can help and it's 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 neat when people you don't expect to step up step up what if you don't want the help from the people that are expecting you to bring the car you don't want their help you might need to find new people. Well, yeah, that's it. <laughs> if you if, don't if, want the help from the people that you're trying to help, ugh. that's not a reflection on if they're good or bad people, but there's some sort of weird dynamic there that is. Well, sometimes people are interested in helping, but they're not the best wrench. So you're going to end up just doing all of it yourself. Well, that there's always something they can learn. do. Yeah, there's, there's something, something they can do or you you is there any other task you can push off to them that you would normally have to do even if it, they might only do it half as well as you it's still getting done and a, a project getting done half as quickly is better than one you have to do yourself usually unless you have to redo it but that's fine <laughs> But it, or maybe push off something else. Like if you usually prep the food for the race too, or something like that, can you just hand that off? So, Hey, I, I cannot handle this right now. Can you um, make all that food for me? Or can you take over that project? Can you take ownership of this part of this? Mm -hmm. And you might, yeah, you might be surprised. Someone might've just been waiting. Sometimes people who do all the work just kind of make it so that everyone else like doesn't really know what to do. And so they don't really ask anymore. Cause when they ask if they can help, you say no. And then, so they stop until you ask and they say oh yeah sure absolutely mm -hmm. yes 100 percent. you know this is the, this is how i know when i'm out of rhythm with you guys is i show up and i don't know what to do so i end up pestering both of you what what needs to be done right now nothing mental leave me alone i'm drinking go away but asking is good <laughs> yeah. that's how you keep coming yeah. back and helping out your team mm -hmm. And then the flip side is sometimes you just see stuff that needs to be done and just start doing it. Well, some things anybody That's can do. Like great. there's, oh, there's, you know, trash on the floor. I can pick that up. Mm -hmm. The car is obviously, windshield's obviously dirty. I can solve that problem. Yeah. Clean uh, the tools. Put them right. in a pile. Yep. Oh, this, this bucket of oil is still here from earlier. I got to go find where the waste oil station is and I can go dump that out. Mm -hmm. The dishes haven't been done from this morning. Can go handle that. How we got a dishwashing fairy actually. Right, exactly. It's totally yes, why. Because Steve uh, noticed that was done. It's something he could do. So he starts doing it. Great. Mm -hmm. And it's appreciated. Yep. All right. Well, hopefully okay. that was helpful. Yeah. Well, all right. Uh, now, how do we avoid this in the future? Well, uh, we're we're now that you've been through it, it once, you have an idea of what it's like. So you kind of get a feeling it's coming. It's like, you know, when you wake up that morning and you get a sore throat starting in the back, you say, you know what? I'm getting a cold. Definitely getting sick. 
Yeah. Same symptoms, you know, kind of thing applies. You say, you know, I'm just not excited to go do this job. Maybe it's a really terrible job. And you know that, but you know, in general, like I'm just not excited about prepping this car. I'm not excited about going this race. I'm not excited about doing whatever the case may be. All right. Well, hang on. Slow your roll for a second. Is this a temporary feeling or, or not? But, che- but acknowledging it, checking in with yourself, you know, follow your plan for a bit, but then uh, you have your plan to be, all right, this is not, this is not what I'm expecting. What do I need to do differently here? Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah, which I typed out the learn your version of, I know how bad this felt last time I dealt with this and I need to do a better job of maintaining that balance. If there's something you have to do it for every event or most events and you absolutely hate it and it just clouds everything else you're doing as part of the project, either farm that out or find a completely different approach to it. I will oh, let you take just, that last one, Chrissy. Yeah, then just keep talking about it. So <laughs> understanding that you have a pro I have a problem and I want to talk to people about it and try to come up with a solution that works for everybody. Take a little bit of less pressure off. Try to ask ask for help. That's not easy for a lot of people. So just making sure that or at least you may not even have to ask, but talk to people. And if you understand what the problems are, then maybe somebody will be able to help jump in and farm out some tasks without you even asking for help. All right. Yep. We talk, talked the about rest of this is and... very hasty editing of me copying initially what Chris wrote. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, um, just the, just know that it looks different for everybody, but it, it absolutely, it does affect you physically. It does affect you mentally. It does affect you emotionally. And it's bad when it's your job or your family situation, but it's, I would call, it almost tragic when it's the thing that's supposed to give you the relief from the other aspects that are causing you stress. So don't let the thing you love become the thing you hate. Try and try and manage all of that sort of thing. And if you see this happening to your friends, step in, at least talk to them about it. Sometimes it's literally just that simple. Hey man, here, sit down, drink this. I'm going to go handle this problem over here. I feel like I, I know some people like this. I feel like I already know people that have a lot of these symptoms and and problems, and I don't know that they are handling it. So there's that. Not my problem to fix, but yes. If they don't want to hear about it, if you have identified some, some that they're in burnout mode, uh, they may not hear or hear it. Mm-hmm. Well, if you're involved with them, you can say, what can I do to help you? You've obviously got a lot going on right now. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. That's about it. Good place to start. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> cool. Yep. So going back to the whole thing, you know, the neurodivergent, we are attracted to change and challenge and novelty and dopamine and all that kind of stuff. And we love things that are different and fast and moving around. And with the exception of actually flying during a large exercise, I have never found anything as stimulating and as challenging as an endurance race. And the the joke going around a lot of the paddock right now is oh we can smell our own we know when we know when there's another uh, uh adhd person kicking around or someone who's just touching the spectrum all that other kind of stuff and it's fun we recognize each other but you look after any of that sort of thing i have actually never been bored at a racetrack because of all of these different things. And what's even great about it is it has built in kind of culpability, you know, checks and balances on how it goes, but it is demanding and it is stressful even when I'm having fun. And that's for everybody, not just people who think like I think. So just me to yourself and uh, have your hobby. And we've all seen this rotating litany of people that come into it. They are all about it. And then a year or six months later, you never see them again. They started out really, really hard, but they just started out so hard and maybe they found another adventure or maybe they just sit and they're angry and they're stewing and they hate the notion of it. Uh, and if you want to leave, that's cool. But if you have to leave for your own health, that's just, it's a tragedy. So take care of yourself. Don't, don't get in over your head. Yep. And if you do recognize it. Absolutely. Okay. Cool. Good show. Yes. Yep. Ooh.
I this is this is pertinent to my entrance. This uh, just just a tip because I woke up today to a foot of sunshine. It was just <laughs> awful. Hey, but it was cold. <laughs> That's not great. Winter in the desert. Oh, it's yeah. cold there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, yes. Is anybody going to give me an intro, or are we just yeah, doing? I'm sorry. Do it's, it's, I'm it's waiting time on you. For... Come on. Just, just the. I'm like, I was like, I could just keep going, but nobody's giving me an intro here. So (laughs) hi. Okay. So we got some snow for the first time in what we three years, I think maybe two, we got a little bit of snow, but we didn't have to shovel it a whole lot. Anyway, on the East coast, we got snow. We forgot how to shovel. So I'm going to give you some ideas on how to make sure that you are not hurting yourself because our snow was very wet by the time we sn- we shoveled it on Sunday. So you don't forget to bend with your knees and not with lifting with your back, lifting with your, uh, with your legs bent, stand with your feet hip width apart, make sure that you're balanced, uh, just making sure that you are not twisting. That is the easiest thing to do when you're doing this. That And same thing with raking leaves, which we are kind of over with now. But um, when you're just, you have an action that you're just not realizing where your body is compared to where your legs are. And it's really just easy. Feels like it's an easier thing to just twist. And that's just not going to be the way to go. Um, make sure you're not picking up too much snow at once, especially since this snow that we were snowing was, uh, shoveling was very heavy. And um, yeah, just don't be dumb. Think about where your body's going to be because it sucks the next day when you're like, I definitely shoveled wrong or moved wrong or did something wrong. Um, it's just dumb. So even if you think it's faster, just watch where your body ergonomics is, where your back is compared to where your legs are. Thanks. Any idea we're doing next week? Cool. It's going to be something amazing. Totes. No pressure. We'll ask a, we'll ask chat GPT. Uh, image search to come up with something. I mean, some of the stuff I've got now, I'll show you guys when we're done. It's hilarious. (laughs) That sounds great. (laughs) Yep. All right. Hey, thanks for downloading us. We hope you enjoyed this week's edition of Everyone Racers. Hope you'll join us in the world of driving, racing, and building and not being burned out because everyone can be a racer, even you. If you enjoyed this podcast, subscribe. It's totally free. And go to iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts and give us that five-star rating. I don't care what you thought, five stars and tell us why. Questions, comments, show ideas, thoughts, emotional outbursts. There's all kinds of places to find us. Facebook, everyone racers, everyone.racers at gmail.com. Pretty much all the other internet things at one of those two. Usually an easy way. Uh, text mental. He loves pictures of your junk at 484-243-0455. And until next week, keep the shiny side up. Even if you're a little burned out, then just go laugh at the uh, Microsoft Bing AI picture generator and see what you get. It's hilarious. And keep those wheels down. <laughs>